Yosh. How's that? And it's uh, working. Sound better on functional functioning. Yes, no, maybe, whoa, yeah. Sound on, shrip on. Is that sound working? Is it happening? Another one, what the heck? Sound is here, Joku is here. Shrippums are alive. Just open two of the same parallel foil. I wonder what the odds of that are. Maybe like similar to the odds of guessing five SERs in a row or not. Does that mean we're gonna? How about this? Let's let's check this out. Sound is sound. All right, yo, who Canadian? Let me know, dude. I'm gonna stack these up, and you tell me which to open, because I want to get the secret rare out of these. So, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine. Which number has the secret rare in it? You let me know. Is it? One through nine. Solid who you can pick these up at Target. I, I don't I don't know if they have maybe they don't have them in Canada. Um, but some some of the shops might sell, you should hit up Game Nerds and see. Uh, I only do cases. Okay, okay, I'll do six then. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll call it Bojack. I'm not doing a bless him because it's not a box. Ah, I'll do a bless him. Alright, bless him number six pack. Stays right there. And then, uh, sorry, I only do K. Oh, one, two, three, four. Okay, I'll do four. Yeah, I'll definitely do four. And then I gotta sort the heck. I have so many comments to sort. So I don't know if you guys keep your comments, but I like to sort all of them. Because friends that I have that get into the game, I like to help them. I like to help them, uh, like, not have to figure the whole. Like, if they. Like, I'd rather build them decks with parallel foils. Or non, you know, non foils. Wow, these are all pretty bunk. I haven't even pulled an SR yet, so that must mean that all the energy is being saved for the SCR that's coming in. Hey, highly blessed. What is up, homie? Welcome to the party. Seven. I think seven comes after. Ooh, yeah. First SR. Kind of a butt SR, but King Vegeta parallel foil leader. That's cool. I think he's a cool leader. I think this is number seven. Yo, um, John, we are coming back to Connecticut to that store on the 20th. I think it's, it's Father's Day, June 20th. We're going to be back up at um, Most Excellent Gaming in Connecticut. So if you're around, dude, come hang. We're going to be there like all day. Parallel foil. We're, we're talking about Parallel Foil City over here. EU plug to help me ridiculous prices that come to the US TP price. Dude. Tournament packs are insane to try and get. It's just stupid. It's just totally stupid. This is why I buy boxes, because you might go to Target and buy a bunch of packs and just get shafted. Man, what a what a rip. Maybe if, if we can get one SPR would be really cool. There's a really good chance we won't also, but yo, SR Bad Rock. Alright, that's not a bad card. It's a good card. And some go tanks thing. Ah, uh, shrip on, shrip pain. Wait, what happened there? Yes, dude, come hang out for sure. Another king parallel foil, a parallel foil king. Second to last pack before the blossom. Let's go, five drop Bardock. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. Five drop Bardock is. Yo, Gabriel, what's up, homie? Thanks for coming to hang out. Oh, cooler, effortless strike, yeah. All right, SPR and the Blossom. We've had a lot of SPRs and Blossoms this set, and no, it's just another one of these freezes. All right, so we'll deal with these later. Now I'm gonna start showing you guys how to sort parallel foils. Hold up, sorry, I just gotta grab a... Alright. Hopefully my pad doesn't die. Whoops! Yo, Doraven crew. What's up, homie? Alright. 
time to start the sorting. So, this is how you sort your cards. Torkai, what's good, homie? So, the trick is getting everything in color order. Now, every set always goes in the same order. It's always, it's always red, blue, green, yellow, black. Always the same. Red, blue, green, yellow, black. And then I don't know the order of, um, I don't know the order of multicolor. I know they go in a certain order as well, but I don't know what it is. But once you start seeing these things, just like, okay, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. And then once you get through the color separation, then you can uh, organize the, um, once you get the color separation, then you can organize each color by number. Because every card has a code on it. And then when you want to build stuff, it's easiest to find those cards when they're all in order. So when your friends are like, whoa, this Dragon Ball Super card game looks really cool, man. You can be like, yeah, definitely, dude. You want me to build you a deck? Let me slap this deck together for you. I have pretty much every single card and I can find any card, I would say confidently less than 20 seconds. So from my collection, to be able to find cards that fast, that's the most efficient way to build decks, is to be able to find your cards really fast. So organizing them makes that possible. And then also, if you have friends you wanna get into the game, you just hand a homie like a whole set of organized play sets of commons, like, that's just a pro gamer move, you know? Just get your friends into the game, get more people into the game, have more fun playing Dragon Ball Super Card Game. And that is the name of the game. IMO. IMO Opinion. Yeah, dude, you gotta do it. So so I get I do all this and then after I do all the colors, so like I'm gonna go through everything and do all the colors. And then I'm going to go back through everything and I'm going to organize everything in order. So all the, all the commons, all the non-foils at this point, it's commons, uncommons and rares. I put them all together, but like any card I want to pull, I just pull out and I don't keep all of them. So like, I like to keep 20 copies of each card, 20 copies of each card is five play sets and the likelihood that I'm going to be making five play sets for like friends to play this game are low. Like by the time I get another friend into it, I'll probably be in another set so I won't need to like pull from these cards so I just go through and organize these as best possible and then the next set comes along and then there's more new fun stuff to play with yep colors and numbers it's a way to do it man and then just put it in drawers I have drawers and drawers and drawers of these cards and you can just pull open any drawer and then what I also do is like whenever a set comes out I'll grab one of each pack art and I'll cut the packs open like uh, carefully. So I'll cut off the art from the pack and then that will have, um, whoops. When I cut open the pack that has the, uh, like each leader on the pack arts usually and the leaders usually correlate with colors. So I'll just put them in order of colors and stuff. Um, this isn't going to be a super long stream. I'm going to have to dip in not too long. Probably a little bit before, right around 9 actually is when I got to get going. But I'm going to hang out and start shripping these things. Actually, this is not a strip them. That's a hoax. This is just organizing. Just organizing commons. The life of save one box for set. I think that's a good idea, man. I think like one or two boxes is a great idea because like I feel like all these cards are going to be so valuable and like the sealed boxes are going to be so valuable because this this game like in general is just very heavily underprinted compared to other TCGs because it's like really not that popular. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but like more often than not, this stuff like sells out really fast and you can't get any more of the set, which means like 
they're not printing that much of it. They're printing like just under the demand. Um, and the demand is like low right now because there are not a lot of people that play this game. Wow, well, how are so many of those in order? That was amazing. What a wonderful experience that was. Sort of. <laughs> What's up, Bobby? Dude, Bobby, you get a shout out in the next video that's coming uh, out on Wednesday. I, uh, I gave you a low key shout out. I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll get a kick out of it. Um, Bandai has been making strides to reprint, which is interesting. Yeah, I think it's really cool that they are reprinting stuff, because, like, at this point, now there's enough evidence to show, like, what cards were made that were actually good and useful. I think as game, like, game developers, it's really hard to tell, like, what's actually going to be a really useful card, what's going to be a useful thing, and you don't really find out, you know, some things are, like, clear, okay, yeah, this is going to be a really good card. But some things you really have to play, and you don't actually see like how useful they are until they're actually in play. Like some things look great on paper, and some things look decent on paper, but like some things look okay on paper, and then when they play, you're like, holy hexagon. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but Bardock fighting against Fate, that promo, like as soon as that promo was announced, I was like, this card is insane. And everybody was on the... Um, the Overrealm Goku, the like double strike crit for like free Overrealm. And yeah, that card's good, but I think that card was good in one situation. And that card is good when people are at five life and that's it. I don't think that card, unless you're like going in for like game kind of, or like you're pressing the last two life off of somebody, like critting the last two off someone. Yeah, it's good then, but like, that card is good at four and three. Bardock is always good. Bardock is good in every situation because two swings of 25k, it's just more pressure. Like there's just, the math is on your side there. Whereas with the Goku, it's not as, I don't think it's as good. TBH, behind the scenes of the Shrippum. As a collector who don't get a good game yet, I'm happy that the reprint as a missed set talent. Yeah, dude. I mean, I think, like, you know, I, I'm very, very much in support of reprints as long as they distinguish them as reprints. If they reprint stuff and make it identical to the stuff that came out previously, I think that is... I think that will work against the favor of collectors and the collector community of this game is bigger than the play player base of this game there's more people that just collect it i think i could be wrong about that but i think there's more people worldwide that just play this game because they're and we saw it during covid like the game picked up so much during covid and people weren't like going to events and playing there were some online stuff but like online's a little bit of a joke if you ask me um don't get me wrong there's definitely skill involved and people do well but like it's not a it's not a real format in my opinion it's it like it's like playing smash online like yeah you can do it and you can like feel good about winning but the real thing is when you square up at the play mat and that gets to play something but it's cool that they built the structure to be able to like play and stuff yeah there are some people that are selected to play with the game. I mean, I think, Ban <laughs> honestly, I think Bandai's kind of listening to me. Like, there was a point where they were, they had announced that they weren't gonna change the reprints, like they were gonna make them identical. And then I made this like really long-winded post in the, in the discussion group about how like the downsides of not doing that and like offered a couple options of different ways things could be done. And literally in like two days, they announced that they were doing exactly what I asked <laughs> that they would do. So I don't want to say like that was completely in credit to me. Somebody on the team could have very well had that idea also. And it could have been coincidence that I said that. But like, I think Bandai might be paying attention to the things that I'm saying. They did send me a box of cards, so maybe they're listening. And like, I'm a pretty rational, reasonable guy. I don't think like... I don't think what I'm saying is being ridiculous. Like, obviously, there's people that weren't in the game earlier, and, like, they would love to have things that are exactly identical to what's current and what things look like right now. But, like, 
you know, you should be rewarded for getting on the train earlier. Like if you were one of the people that helped support something at the beginning, you should be credited for that, which is why we have that chat group. <laughs> so also, if any of you guys here like aren't on Facebook or aren't in the group on Facebook, make sure to hit me up on Facebook and I will add you to the Joe Crew Pirate Party Brigade. Yeah, I, it, it, it's, I don't know much about other TCGs. Like, I've never played another card game. I just, like, I found this card game, like, years ago, and I bought it because I collected Dragon Ball Heroes, and I was planning to just, like, use the art to make clothes for myself, which is something that I do regularly. Like, I usually just go to Japan and buy cards and then use the art to, like, make clothing for myself, and I was like, whoa. Like, this game low-key kind of looks better than Dragon Ball Heroes. Yeah, I think, I think, like, people give Bandai, like, a lot of crap about stuff, but, like, they really listen to the player base, and, like, this is the most diverse game I've ever played. Like, the meta of this game right now is so versatile. There's definitely stuff that's, like, clearly stronger and has the widest variety of favorable matchups. But the fact that like you can play rogue strat like a variety of rogue strategies and like kind of hang in events is very cool and that's not something that is like common in games um from what i understand dragon ball fighters is kind of like that also at times i think it gets uh when they release new support you know everybody wants to be playing that character I've been playing since the end of set 5 and beginning of set 6. Bar Screw is the first deck I ever built in the blue one, but the first competitive deck was Green Broly VR. Nice. Yeah, Green Broly VR was really fun. I started playing, um, I started playing at set 4, and, um, the first thing I built was, like, soon after I started playing, the Ultimate Box came out, and I was just in love with the U7 Goku stuff, so I used to play the green, uh, Goku leader. And I just really enjoyed that deck. I really enjoyed playing Hopi Universe 7. And like I used to play with uh, Objection and I could get Hopi Universe 7 out on turn four and play with Beans and the Beans could untap. And I remember one time in an event I played, I chained three Hope of Universe 7s on somebody and like ripped like seven cards out of their hand and like critted so many life off them. They were at like eight life and I just like wrecked them. It felt so fun. But not anymore because Hope of Universe 7 is officially an SCR. Yo, Ryan Connolly, what up, dude? Welcome to the chat. We're just sorting our shrippums. We shrippumed a lot of cards and I like to organize everything. So I'm showing the first part of my organization process. I'll probably do this again as I continue to organize cards. Because I got a lot to. How do you choose which card to sacrifice? As an energy it's a good question man um, what's actually really cool now is like there's a little bit more that goes into the decision making because there's a lot of decks that are starting to like um, make the energy a more 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 utility based so um, just because you put something in your energy doesn't mean like you're never gonna see it again and there's some stuff that's starting to like play out of your energy so it really depends on like ratios you know like early game i would say the trend is like you're usually putting stuff in your energy that like you're gonna see again later and you don't need early so like if you have like you know some like seven drop that you're not gonna play till turn four and you know you have three of them or four of them then like definitely charge that but you don't want to charge a secret rare but then there's also stuff like the Zeno Super Combo or Roshi uh, that like can get stuff out of your energy so you can be kind of cheeky with stuff and just like flex and like charge stuff in your energy that like you can charge a secret rare and some people be like what are you doing and then like be like oh whoops oh too late now I guess I charged it and then later like grab it out of your energy and be like ha fake out gotcha should have known this was a card stuff like that I think is pretty fun um, I remember like the first so like I <laughs> When I started playing the game, uh, Awakened Powers were 80 bucks, 
and I didn't know that you can only run one secret rare in a deck, so like I bought four of them, because I was like, oh, this is a really good card, like I should definitely, actually I bought three at the time, I was like, this is a really good card, like I feel like I should at least run three of these in my deck, like it kills somebody in one hit, that's sick. And it worked in the deck I was playing, so I was like, I should definitely run these. And like the first event I played at, turn one, I charged an awakened power in my energy, and my opponent was like, whoa, dude, like, seriously? And I was like, what? He was like, you're charging that? And I was like, oh, yeah, dude, I got like two more in my deck. I'll probably, I see a lot in my deck, like, I'll probably see it by the time I play it. And he was like, wait, <laughs> what do you, you can't have more than that. So, uh,. So yeah, uh, I learned that, but I had bought the cards and I was like, they're really pretty cards, I'll just hold on to them, like I feel like these are really, really nice cards and um, I'm glad I held on to them, it's a good investment. Um, I like this better than Magic, no land lock, you force, yeah, there's like, you know, I feel like it adds a different element of versatility to the game and like what's really cool is, like I feel like this card game is kind of like, like animes in some way, where like, you kind of start sleeping on something where you're just like okay i'm used to this thing like this thing does this thing and then all of a sudden like you learn that like sanji has like this crazy backstory and he's like a prince of like this army and you're like wait what like this guy has like all this other stuff going on and that kind of uh that i feel like that is kind of what dragon ball super card game does it's like oh yeah you guys thought that this card could only do this thing well guess what now it does this 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 and this you're like, whoa, okay, and now this adds so much versatility. And, like, to have this many cards, and, like, for... <laughs> you guys have to realize, like, the last ban list was three cards. Like, to go into a set and only have to ban errata three cards, that's insane. That's insane that they can build a game that is so has so much foresight and balance built into it that they can continue to release, like, new product and stuff. Um it's like really amazing so i don't know i i have huge props to the content creators of this game i think uh, the, the creators of this game and like the you know the team that is developing it it's the, the the schedule on which they put stuff out i know a lot of people complain they're like oh like oh, there's so much new stuff coming out I'm like you don't if you you know if you don't have the means to collect everything don't collect everything like singles are relatively cheap and yeah some stuff comes out and it's expensive the, the, the promos are a problem the promos are definitely a problem in this game. I would say if there was one thing that I would complain about, it's the tournament pack promos. And I wish the way that they did it was they released an expansion along with every set where you could go and you can buy the tournament pack promo so you could build the most competitive thing and play with it because like just the people that are winning shouldn't be rewarded by having better cards. It's just going to make them win more. So like there should be an expansion that comes out with every set. You can buy that expansion and, you know, get two of each promo and buy another if you want to play set. And then when you go to events, then you get, like, alt art to the promos that have, you know, foil on them. And then the winners have winner stamps and stuff like that. Like, promos need to be more accessible. It's a huge, huge problem. And I hope that they address it because I think there's a lot of really straightforward solutions that would resolve that, in my opinion. COVID is ruined TP. I don't, um, I don't think COVID necessarily has ruined TPs. I think like it's the way that they're doing TPs in the Unison Warrior block. TPs didn't used to be like this. TPs used to be, um, TPs used to be something that you would just like, you could pick up a tournament pack. People will sell them on eBay. And like, I think that's fine because not everybody can go to these things. Yeah, obviously Bandai doesn't want people doing that. But if they made the tournament pack cards available, people wouldn't be selling tournament packs because tournament packs cost stores $25 and they sell them online for like ridiculous prices. Right now tournament kits go for like $350 to like $500 depending on the set. And that's like ridiculous that stores, you know, I know stores need the money and I don't want to like put it on the stores, but like don't put the stores in the position. Just make them available. And if they were available, stores wouldn't be selling them because people would be able to get the cards elsewhere and just go and play and then buy singles for the other stuff that they want to get. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, anyway, that's my thought on it. Maybe if somebody's listening, I will... Uh, maybe I'll make a post in the group at some point, like this week. I'll say something. 
I'll say something. It's my birthday on Sunday, so maybe I'll make a post on my birthday and be like, hey, Bandai, it's my birthday. Please listen. Please hear Joku's call to fix the tournament pack problem. Um, they could have called those side sets tournament of power. They're what? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Tournament of power. What a box to have. I can't believe I, I bought the last boxes of those on the internet before they skyrocketed. Um, when I graduated, when I took my last dental exam before I became a dentist, they were $80 and I bought eight boxes and I opened all of them and I got an awakened power out of the third pack <laughs> and then I stripped all the rest. And I, I think I got like, I think I got three signatures i got a B I got a beerus a frieza and a vegeta but i didn't get a goku but during covid it's somehow like two gokus just came up on tcg player for 60 bucks or they were yeah 65 each and i was just like grabbed them immediately it's like somebody somebody mistakenly listed these prices and i'm buying them right now or they just don't know what they're doing so i picked up two that was like last it must have been last June, I think, is when I found those. And that was like the playset. I liked PPG and the other tournaments who run online tournaments. They allow availability for those who can't travel. The thing is. Yeah, I like that. I think it's like, I don't want online to completely go away. I just would just like for there to be both. Because right now, like, like online is cool it's an option for people to get you know the promotional materials i've signed up for every single online event this summer because i'm just gonna play three i'm gonna get my promos and then i'm gonna drop because i'll probably lose to somebody that magically pulls the exact card that they need out of god knows where and that's fine i actually don't mind when people cheat against me like it doesn't make me excited to play the game but like i would rather people have like all the best cards they possibly could so that i have the greatest challenge in front of me because that's that what's gonna what's gonna you know make me stronger for me kill OP Mary DB and bang Naruto marry one kill one and bang one <laughs> uh, I would probably uh, Mary Dragon Ball, Bang One Piece, and uh, Kill Naruto. That would be it for me. I like Naruto, but it doesn't. It just. I only read it. I never watched it, and the story didn't do as much for me. Like One Piece. One Piece has done a lot for me as an individual in life. I really, really like One Piece. One Piece has. One Piece psychologically has helped me grow a lot and appreciate the ride and stop focusing so much on the goals. I don't I don't watch One Piece, I read it. I I jumped in I just started watching at the uh Wano Kun or Wano. I think it's Wano. I don't know even how to say it because I just read I never know how to pronounce anime manga anime stuff because I just read the mangas. It's a lot more manageable for me to just keep up with stuff. There's actually a new chapter that came out. But yeah, the manga doesn't have fillers. The manga is like the, the manga is for all all stories is that's the original story that's what the artist drew and wrote and like that's how the story's supposed to be told and then manga or animes are adaptations and some animes are really good like i think the i think the demon slayer anime is actually better than the manga the manga is great but like they they built stuff into the anime that really like adds to the manga and builds on it so i think there's value in both for some but like definitely you know i've watched a few hundred episodes of one piece and they were like hard to get through so i just read it and i'm jumping in like in more current but you can get you know there's an app on your phone it's called the shonen jump app and you can um <laughs> um i see your comment there i uh yeah i think reading reading manga is really fun for me i mean different strokes for different folks the right thing isn't the right thing for everybody but it's easy for me to just download a bunch of manga and i travel a fair amount so i can just you know download it have it on my ipad or whatever and then just read it as i go um 
sorting. What a time it is. I really tried to get into One Piece. People keep telling me it gets good soon. It's just okay to me. I've gotten the Chomper's story and maybe a bit further. Still not crazy about it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like if you don't like Luffy right away, you're probably not going to like this story. Like, he really appeals to me because he's, like, you know, this stupid kind of carefree guy that, like, has a really strong moral compass because of experiences he had when he was a kid, which I really resonate with that. Um, experiences that I had when I was young really uh, influenced the development of my moral compass, which is heavily based on these fictional characters that I look up to and aspire to be like in terms of their uh, focus on like enjoying the experience of life instead of being so like goal oriented and to still have goals and stuff, but like really, you know, enjoy life while it's happening instead of trying to focus so much on like getting where you're going because you'll get there you'll you'll get somewhere you know and like wherever you go the the value in where you go is derived from the experience that you have while you're traveling there i think are you reading it or are you watching it ryan that's a question i have for you because if you're watching it I could totally agree that the story won't grab you, but if you're reading it, the pace of reading it, if you're saying that story doesn't grab you, yeah, that's, read it, dude. Download the Shonen Jump app. It's $2 a month. You can read everything. The pace is way better. The first, like, the first, like, 500 episodes of One Piece are, like, super slow. And there's so much filler, and it's just like, oh, uh, okay. Like, what is this song and this slow pan over this, like, very poor animation? It's from the 90s, you know? It's just, like, not that good. The new stuff is really good, and I would love to start watching the new stuff. I just haven't had the time to, like, watch anything. I'm trying to get to, through Jujutsu Kaisen, but I'm watching it with Joyza, and she's doesn't have the same tolerance for binging anime as I do, but it's a short one, so I want to enjoy it with her, and we're getting through it day by day. Yo, Reload Rich, what's up, dude? Welcome to the party. Thanks for coming by, man. I'm just sorting these commons. I'm showing you guys how I sort my commons. This is like phase one, basically. There's like a bunch of different phases. Uh, Um, yeah, I dude, I thought the Big Bomb arc was cool, but again, I've only read it, so I don't know if it's different, um, when you're watching it, but, but yeah, I do, I do enjoy One Piece thoroughly, thoroughly do enjoy Yes, this is not a shrip'em. This is a sort'em. A sort'em. A sortium. And then I keep the boxes and, like, I'm going to just put everything that is, you know, a certain color. I'll just put it in that box. Right now I have three boxes of colors. And then everything else will uh, slowly make it into... Uh, well, once I get the next two boxes, then they'll go in there. It's just five stacks, and it's just stacking cards. And the, and the more you look at these, the more you, you know what color they are. I mix up green and red with some level of frequency, so I kind of rely on the characters to know, oh, okay, this is this archetype, so this goes in this stack if it's green or red, because maybe I'm a little color different, possibly. It's been like 25 episodes chasing down Luffy and his crew over a cake. Oh, yeah, that's like... I don't know if I could get on board with that. Uh, the the manga is, is faster. And it was like, it, I don't know, the manga just hits so hard. Like, I just catch myself, like, crying so much when I'm reading that story. It's, oh my god, it just hits me in the feels so hard. Whoa. God, this guy, this kid. Like, what an amazing kid. What an amazing kid with such... Such absolute amazing potential. And it's just like they keep getting stronger and they keep getting better and you're like, whoa, yo, DJ PRs, what's good, dude? 
Um, I don't sell my commons. I give them to friends that are getting into the game. So if you want to get into the game and you want to hit me for shipping, I will send you a playset of commons of this set, dude. I got no problem with that. Anybody, anybody here, if you don't, if you cover shipping, I will send you a playset of commons because all these are gonna get sorted eventually. I'm gonna have extras, and uh, I'm not doing anything with them. So. There's certain cards that are like really good also. In the event that like I don't pull that many of a certain card, then I you know I won't I'll keep them for mine, but as long as I have my twenty, first come, first serve, man. These gotta go somewhere. And I'd rather they go to a place where they're actually getting used instead of somewhere where they're just gonna sit in the closet and get dusty. Um, I'll usually like at, you know, if there, uh, when I go to locals, like if there's players that like don't have enough money to buy this many boxes and they like need, they want the commons, like I just give them to them. I'm not doing anything with them, and like I don't, I don't honestly, I don't have the space to like house all this stuff in the long term. So, oh yeah, man, <laughs> letting you get back into the game, dude. You, you got to do you, bro. You got to do you and believe in yourself and communicate about being supported and the things that you're passionate about. You know, this game is a money sink, so I know, you know, that can definitely be a moot point, but, like, it's kind of a pretty good investment. Oh, baby, dude. Yeah, I mean, if there's a baby, you know, that definitely, that definitely changes things a young one to care for definitely changes the scenario congratulations on the baby by the way i didn't know i didn't know you had a kid man that's awesome congratulations to you you're gonna be a great dad man the kid is gonna be an ultimate gamer just make sure he's watching the joku dmd shoku on a daily basis. He or she, sorry. I don't know if it's a she. Maybe a she. But she could be the ultimate gamer also. Um, but yeah, man. Dude, DJ PRs and I met in a GameStop in Arizona. I just walked in and this man was like, dude, you got the Dragon Ball drip. And I was like, bro, thank you. Check this Dragon Ball stuff out. And I whipped out my deck and was like, yo, peep game, dude. I was picking up the Dragon Ball Heroes for Switch to get the promos, the... Gogeta promos. I think that leader is actually pretty good. I kind of want to try and build something red with Gohanks and Gohanks. Excuse me, Steve. Sorry if you're listening. Um, I uh, I want to build something with uh, Gohanks and um, the uh, uh, Gohanks and um, the the leader from um, uh, what's it called? The, Go the Gogeta leader from the the promo from Dragon Ball Heroes when they released that game. Yeah, uh, that was pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. So how are you guys' weekend? Did you guys got to have a good holiday weekend? I had a wonderful weekend. Little Joe, my son's going to be raised on the anime content, not going to lie. I'm going to hit you up on some dental stuff because I'm not liking my smile anymore. Yeah, man, drop me a line, dude. You know, a good dental routine is a key component to quality of life enjoyments. Sonicare, toothbrush, and flossing daily with a Listerine Ultra Clean handled flosser. Those two tools are the keys to success, my dude. I stand by that statement, and I always will. All right, blue stuff in here. We got a blue box over here. And well, this is green stuff. Goes over here in that box. Red stuff is gonna be the next box there. And yellow stuff has a box, which is right here. And black stuff is in this box. I thought they were gonna bring back multicolor this set. I'm kind of surprised that multicolor didn't come back. That, so maybe we'll, we'll, we'll see. Oh, just drop some, just drop some not shiny cardboard. This one is stacked a little differently. Whoops. 
green, yellow, blue, red, blue, green, yellow, black. Always. It's always the order. It's always the same. Red, yellow, green, blue, black. Every time, man. Every time. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Dust, what's up, dude? Yeah, man. Oh, well, um, I, I do, you know, I work in a dental office. Yeah, I do have an office. I am there weekly. Come on by. Um, but honestly, dude, I, I, I know a bunch of really good doctors out in Arizona. A lot of my friends are still in Arizona. I could definitely refer you to one of my friends so you don't have to fly out here because dental work's expensive, man. It's not cheap. Not saying that I wouldn't want to kick it. I would love to kick it, but you're probably better off having a dentist that's in your area that you can see regularly. And I can totally refer you to my friend who I think is an amazing, amazing doctor. Dr. Igor Borisov. You can look him up. I-G-O-R-B-O-R-I-S-O-V. He is one of the most amazing doctors I've ever met. And I think uh, that might be a good option for you, if, you know, since you're out there. Instead of having to fly here, I mean, I'm always happy to give you advice and talk to you about what you might need. But, um, uh, yeah, Igor's the man. He is one of my best pals in the whole world. He's an amazing doctor. I've been to a dentist since I got my braces removed back in high school. Yeah, dude, yeah, yeah, hit up Igor, man. Um, I think his office is in Mesa. Um, but he's got a really cool practice, and he? he's doing a lot of really cutting-edge stuff, and he's like really on the forefront of developing a lot of really cool, um, like digital dentistry stuff. He's like, he's if if like if dental students were like different round draft picks of like football for like kids coming out of college, and uh, we're talking about like. Yeah, dental school, obviously. He would have been, like, first round, first pick. Oral surgeon. Guy's, like, amazing. Um, Igor Borisov. Definitely check him out. He's the man. How's the music volume, by the way? Is it okay? I don't know if anybody... If I should turn it up, turn it down, let me know. I just have it playing over here. My, uh... Uh... Royalty free. Royalty free techno music. Gotta love it. Curious about Igor Borisov or curious about the Dragon Ball Super Card Game? Dragon Ball Super Card Game is an amazing game. I highly recommend playing it. It's really good and it's really fun. And it requires a very large brain size as you get stronger. And there's always somebody better than you. Unless you're my sensei, then you're the best. I, I feel for him, because how is he going to get better if he doesn't have people to play to wax him regularly, you know? I can just go and have Miguel wax me, but it's hard for me to wax him, you know? But it's my duty as his Padawan to learn how to apply the wax effectively and strip it off of... Um, his neck beard so he can become a stronger card player both tbh dude the card game looks great i mean like i don't know if is it better if i don't have this light on can you see the can you see the cards better i don't know Let's see does it look any better no that's like more glare actually whoops um, but yeah, it's a great looking game. It's a really fun game. I love it. I know a lot of people that really lo love it. Script it, dude. Man, I think he's in Colorado now. Um, no, he's definitely not. Igor is definitely in Arizona, for sure, 100%. If he's going anywhere, he's coming to New Jersey and working with me. And that's it. But that may be in years to come. Dr. Borisov. Yeah, I think it's the overhead light. Hang on, I have a... This might actually work, but then it might be too dark, so...
Is that any better? Or... Struggling. Got desk space, desk space here. This is live stream. That that looks a little better. Yeah. I think that's pretty good. Hang on. Oh, that's what's making the glare. It's that light. All right, that's pretty good. Cool. Can you guys see the cards a little better here now? There we go. Yeah, Yosha. And half of my face is dark, which looks cool also. I like that. The dark side of the Joku's face. Friendly neighborhood dark side of face Joku. So, did you guys get up to anything fun this weekend? Anybody have a good time? No, Igor's very not bald. Uh, he's got he's got a nice head of hair on him. Look up uh, on uh, if you're on Instagram. Yeah, I know you're on Instagram. Um, look up Bruise and Screws. I'm pretty sure that's his Instagram. B R E W S and S C R E W S. Dude, 24 hour stream, whoa. That is some serious stuff, man. Serious dedication. Yo, Tiago de Sousa, what's good, man? Welcome to the pirate party. I'm just putting cards in the stacks that are their colors so I can organize them and get all my play sets together. And have my commons all sorted so I can help my friends build decks that are getting into the game and so on and so forth. I have a, I like to keep 20 copies of each common. That's my that's my gold. Who are you talking about Igor? Are you looking at his Instagram, dude? Legend is a serious understatement. Igor is a dental god. <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> It's insane. I look up to him so much. He's like, he's just like constantly innovating things. Nice. Motorized wheelchair. That sounds tight, dude. I like cruising around in motorized vehicles. That like you can feel the open air while you're enjoying the enjoying enjoying the open air, cruising around the world going on adventures having a great time yeah the card game just looks so good it's such a dang good looking card game it's like wild if this is the first time you're seeing it you can probably appreciate how good looking it is green yellow green black blue yellow red black blue green black yellow yellow red blue green black blue yellow i set up my graphics for the new video i'm working on just waiting for a last little bit of cards to come in nice man Chicago is dope speaking of building decks what would be a good leader to start off with a brand new player something that feels good makes you want more dude i think soul striker is the most fun leader right now um and um, send me a message on um, send me a message on uh, on Facebook and I'll tell you a couple cards to pick up that are super chill super cheap right now that I think are gonna become expensive actually I'll just uh, I, I can't spill the beans right now it's too top secret i can't i have to wait till after connecticut let's be honest just here just the fact that dentists are talking about social media by storm and showing the fun side of being done savage yeah dude the, the the next generation of doctors man i'm telling you like the uh you know you got i gotta respect the expertise and experience that older docs have but they're teaching doctors differently now. And I think like, you know, medicine has a really bright future uh, for, 
you know, people that are taking the right approach and, and looking at a more bio-individual approach and not, not so focused on, like, big picture, you know, throw a bunch of medications at somebody and hope that one of them hits the issue and, you know, cover the other side effects with other medications. Like, that approach is just, like, lame. It's lame and it's dated and it's dangerous. And, like, it really impacts quality of life in a negative way. And um, it's really more important to approach people as individuals in the medical setting the way that it was for thousands of years in all other medicines. And, like, we're not any smarter than people were thousands of years ago. Like, we know things from different angles, but we're saying the same stuff people have been saying. It's not like... It's not like some new breakthrough or rocket science stuff. It's just like, this is like, you know, we're talking about people's health and taking care of them. And like, there's so many different, uh, yeah, dude, Igor's Instagram is insane. He's like, he's like one of the best doctors ever. You should totally, totally go pay him a visit and be like, yo, Joku sent me and <laughs> he will, he will enjoy that. <laughs> Um, yeah, he'll take great care of you, man. He's a really good doctor. I respect him very, very, very much. Always have, always will. bad dentist growing those very very rough in my mouth the point I hated going to him because he worked out a commission for weeks he was a dick to it yeah man you know the really unfortunate thing about dentistry is like you kind of profit off of people not taking care of themselves and like I I'm like straight up with my patients about it I'm like look like you don't you don't take care of your teeth I'm gonna make money that you could have to like buy yourself a nicer car like I drive a golf cart around town. I'm not trying to like fall out and like have some crazy car. Like I buy Dragon Ball cards and like I drive a small electric car and I make all my own clothes. So like I, I don't have like super high costs of living and I'm not looking to live some like really crazy extravagant lifestyle. Like I wanna be a doctor that helps people and help people stay healthy. And I'm trying to explain to you what you can do to like not have to pay me all this money and I would rather just charge you more for the time that I'm spending with you so that like I can continue running my practice because dental running a dental practice overhead is like 80%. It's insane. Like, and of course, like I want to use the best materials. I want to research stuff and I don't want to compromise and be like, okay, I'm going to buy this less expensive material because it's cheaper and I can get more of it. No, like I want to buy the most expensive stuff to do the best possible work for my patients and charge them what it costs to do it. And then, you know, just be honest and like let people know what they can do i'm always gonna have work like people are gonna come in with issues it's just that's what it is but like if you have the right tools to take care of your teeth like just learn to do it and and make it something like one of the relations i draw to like take care of your teeth is like um Joku is like, it's like, Joe, you keep messing up. This is just another booster box in my room. Do their thing, yo. <laughs> um, I, uh, one of the things I try to, like, all right, so, like, you guys know, like, babies, right? Like, they shit their pants. That's just something that they do. They, like, walk around and they just, like, take dumps in their pants. Because it's easy. It's way easier to live life taking dumps in your pants. And like, if you can just take a dump on the go, like why would you go to the bathroom? Why would you waste time sitting on the toilet when you can just like do it in your pants and somebody's gonna clean it up for you? It's just way easier. You know, you've only been on earth for like a handful of days, hardly, compared to how long you're gonna live for your life. And you don't wanna waste time like sitting on the toilet and like going to the bathroom. You just, you some, you're gonna have to take dumps, so you might as well just do it on the go. Um, but eventually, your parents explain to you, like, yo, like, okay, you can, like, stop smelling bad and, like, getting these, like, poop rashes. Like, you just have to sit on this thing and, like, do your business here. And then once you start doing that, you're like, oh, oh, this actually feels pretty good to not have sh dumps in my pants. Like, having sharts running down my legs, like, it's actually pretty gross. 
and it feels better when I just do it in this toilet and then it's not like on me and I don't have to waste time getting cleaned and I don't have to wear this like weird underpants anymore. I can just like sit on this toilet and do this thing. And that's kind of like how I explain flossing, right? Like if you don't floss every day, you don't know what it feels like to have your teeth flossed and clean every day. But once you start doing it every day, you can start to gain that proprioception of like, oh, this is what it feels like. Like every day at the end of the day, I'm not gonna go to bed without flossing because like it feels gross between my teeth. But if you can't feel that, then you don't know what it is. And if you don't know what it is, then you're not gonna do it. So having the opportunity and the perspective to be like, oh, okay, like this is something I actually really gotta do. Um, it allows you the experience and uh, perspective to take better care, basically. And that's kind of how I explain flossing. It's like you wouldn't walk around with dumps in your pants. So why are you walking around with dumps between your teeth? No, it's not actually poop, but it's gross. It's gross and like, and it compromises, you know, your, your periodontium and the bone structure that holds your teeth in place. And like, you know, eating is like a thing that you can enjoy for a long part of your life. Like, from what I understand, there's like three things that you can consistently enjoy when you're old and eating and sleeping are two of those things. And teeth are really important for both of those things. The third, I believe teeth are potentially optional. I don't know if you necessarily need them, but eating and sleeping contribute heavily to quality of life. And if you can't do those things when you're older because like you didn't floss or you didn't brush, like that's a bummer, man. And if somebody, if somebody explained it to you, then it's kind of on you. But, um, this is making me hungry. <laughs> yeah, potty training is going to be a nightmare, but maybe if you explain it to them in terms of flossing, teach them flossing first and then, and then see if, if you're getting them flossing that you can get them to start. No, I don't know. I couldn't even imagine, man, having kids. Like, I really want to have kids one day, but like. I'm not ready right now, man. I, I got too much stuff I'm trying to figure out. Too many, like, moving pieces. I, honestly, I don't think there's ever, like, a good time to have kids. And if I had one, I definitely would, you know, get myself together and make my life work around that. But I'm, I think I, I, have, I have more adventuring to do on my journey before I'm really ready to raise a young one. I'm not quite there, but I aspire to be there, and I respect everybody that is there and that's doing it. My hat is off to y'all. <laughs> Wrath of the Teeth God. Alex Ortiz, what's up, dude? Are cashews good for teeth? I mean, eating anything that's not harder than your teeth is actually kind of good for your teeth because your body gets a physiological response that's like, okay, something is here. I'm biting into a thing, and my bone and teeth need to be there. So, like, if you extract a tooth and you don't have a tooth there and the socket isn't bone grafted and there's no pressure pushing on that, the bone just kind of starts disappearing, honestly. There's nothing there telling it that it needs to stay there, so there's no reason for it to stay there. And it'll just basically, like, go away. And then you don't have that bone support. And then it's a lot harder to, um... Then it's a lot harder to restore the tooth or, you know, do anything moving forward to maintain that space effectively. All right, these boxes are, colors are in these boxes. These are gonna need to start going down here, down there. Boxes on boxes on boxes on boxes on boxes. It's a green box, I should probably put them in order. Boxes, yellow. Got those all in order. This is blue, blue box. Blue box is here. And the red box is here. Yaha, Yosha. Alex Ortiz. Oh, gotta catch up on these comments over here. Uh, bro, that pants baby is gonna be super dripped out. Yeah, my, my kid is gonna floss like super hard, floss like a boss. Uh, what's financial tip for DBS right now? Because these cars are getting ex too expensive. Um, you know, it's tough. It's a tough thing to manage. I think like one of the things that will benefit you is like pay attention to the cars or that are coming out. And before people like get hyped, kind of figure out like what is it that you want to play. 
you know, if you follow the waves of what other people are playing, you're inevitably going to be paying more for cards because everybody wants those cards. But if you find out what you want to play before everybody else finds out what they want to play, or like you figure out some spice before everybody else does, then like the cards are cheap. Like buying singles online are super, super cheap. It's extremely affordable. Um, especially a lot of like older stuff is like just like a couple bucks, you know, like some cards are like cents and like you know i like foiling out my decks i like blinging stuff out i like shiny cards i'm just like i am uh i'm a sucker for shiny cardboard but you don't need to foil out your decks and to be honest it's actually a lot um it's a lot easier to read your cards when they're not foil <laughs> like the reading the cards gets harder as they're shiny so unless you really know what the cards do like you're better off playing non-foil so you can like read them because there's a lot of text on these cards um well this card's actually really good Whoa, this card's nuts. This makes skill as 40k? What the heck? Alright, that's going in the deck. That is going in Soul Striker. Wow, I didn't even think about that. That card's crazy. That card's really, really good. Full power unleashed. And it's Trunks, like, punching his fist through Goku. That's pretty rad. I feel like for any TCG play, you know, people, the rotation so consistently and friends chip and things will work out. Yeah, and, like, it depends, like, are you trying to play competitively or are you trying to play for fun? Like, that makes a really big difference also. If you're trying to play competitively, like, yeah, you're going to pay more because those are the cards that people want to play the things that are competitive. But if you're playing for fun, like, you can literally just buy, like, pre-order a couple booster boxes and then, like, build the decks, like, all the decks in the set. I think the most fun way to play this game, like, if you have homies that play the game, definitely, or, like, homies that are willing to play the game with you, the most fun way to play this game, I think, is, uh, to just buy the, like, a couple booster boxes and then just build all the decks with, like, the cards you get and then just buy the couple extra SRs that you need and stuff. And, like, don't run any secret rares unless you both have a secret rare or, like, buy, like, you know, two lineages and just say, like, you know, I'm going to use lineage in every single deck that we play and when you play casually with friends. And I think that's really the best way to um, play this game. It's super fun. My opinion on that. But, you know, different strokes for different folks, man. It's not the right, the not not the most fun way to play. It's the most fun for everybody. But I really like that a lot. I was having a lot of fun. Like, once Unison Warrior dropped, they really built these sets to be, like, fun and interactive with the cards that are within them. And I, I don't think a lot of people play like that. You know, I think most people are, are building competitive stuff and, you know, trying to build stuff that can wax and clap. But sometimes it's good to just have some fun with your friends, I think. Oh man, we're like halfway through this case of commons. It's pretty good, pretty good. We got a whole other case of commons after this. And there. Oh man, I think that's three stacks of boxes in that next one. Yikes, it's gonna be a lot of common sorting for this set. We stripped a lot of, a lot of boxes. I'll probably just go through and grab the rares at a certain point and then just do those. A lot of cardboard. A lot, a lot, a lot of shiny card. Not shiny cardboard in this case, actually. Um, but what about you guys? What do you? What do you get? What are the ways you guys enjoy playing this game? Are there things that you enjoy doing more, like certain colors that you like playing more, or anything like that? Hey, by the way, I got a new IG, so if the homie Igor hits you up and asks why, I got hacked and lost my baby boy. I'm not sure I understand. You lost your Instagram, or um, did that just happen? Or 
Alex Ortiz, does that does that answer your question or not? I don't know how you play the game or what your involvement is. Like, if you play competitively, you know, the thing, like, either build something rogue that can hang, that's like a, you know, not, not a strat that a lot of other people are using. Yeah, I think Dragon Ball is a lot more fun to open than Pokemon, man. Pokemon is like, you know, it's cute, and I appreciate the cards a lot. I have a lot of respect for them. But, like, you, when you open Pokemon cards, you open so many duds. And, like, even when you get dud packs, like, I just opened a bunch of dud packs, but, like, you still get these really good-looking shiny cards, and a lot of them are, like, really good. And occasionally you can, like, pull a parallel foil that's just, like, crazy value. So, I don't know. I like, I like opening Dragon Ball. It's my favorite thing to do. I feel like the the target I go to in uh, uh, like South Jersey. Every time I go, it's like all the packs I get. There's like nothing like super shiny in them. I feel like somebody just like I feel like there's something going on there. Oh, sounds tricky. Pulled a shiny GMAX Zard, so I was done with Shining Fates. Yeah, dude, once you get that card, that's definitely, you know, cut your losses. Play to win, and then get the heck out. That is the card to pull, for sure. Whoa, sneeze, sneezy, sneezy and easy. Oh man, allergies are going on here for sure. New Jersey stuff's crazy. We got these cicadas. The cicadas are wild, man. There's like so many cicadas out. So insane. Um, I like all the cool skillless stuff that's going on. I feel like skillless stuff is like really fun to play in this deck. And I like that it's called skillless because like there's a lot of tech around playing skillless. So it's like, oh yeah, no skills, but it's actually like extreme supreme skill on like a pretty deep level. It's pretty lit. You guys collecting the other TCGs? Um, Dragon Ball is really the only one that I collect. If they made a One Piece TCG, I'd probably, probably acquire. I know Flesh and Blood is really popular. I don't really know much about it. Um, my homies at Gamers R Us were interested in having me show off some of the cards, but I just don't really know much about it, and I don't know, like, what's cool. I know it's a really, it's gaining a lot of popularity, and the cards are, like, extremely valuable, but I just don't know much about the game itself, or, like, the lore. Sand Invasion, like, to play more than collect. Yeah, I mean, collecting's, like, pretty unnecessary. I'm, like, a Dragon Ball collector in general, so that's one of the reasons why I like collecting, and I also, like, I like getting people into the game by just like handing them cards and being like, hey, figure out what these do and have some fun. So that's like one of the big appeals for me. But yeah, playing is definitely more fun than collecting. I would, I would, I would definitely, I mean, opening secret rares, it's not much you can do to argue with that. And this set, like, they really, really really stepped it up with the secret rares in this set I, I know like they're not necessarily the best secret rares that have ever been printed i think they're all good in their own ways and they all have like potential utility with the right things but they're um so good looking like the way they did the reverse hollow foil on them is insane and the ability to like do gradation on foil stamp 
um, foil card stock like that while also putting like a gold foil uh, stamp on top of it that is like um, that thin in certain places it's just like that's on another level that's totally totally wild Ooh, we got one like hey thanks to whoever smashed that like that was a that was a homey move a homey maneuver I'm probably gonna do like one or two more boxes here and then wrap up the stream thanks to everybody that's been hanging out and I enjoy responding to these uh, comments anybody that's jumping in the comments and there on the chat. I know he's been here hanging out. I'm watching. I pay attention. I appreciate it. I enjoy it. I have a good time doing this. Hope you guys have a good time hanging out. Sortum. The Shrippum Sortum lifestyle. And reaching the end of the box. Um, probably going to call it after this box and I'm closing in on it so thank you guys for hanging out thanks for being live in the chat whoever smashed that like button thank you for smashing that like button and I'll probably do this again the next time I'm sorting I mean I got a lot of sorting to do so if you guys enjoyed you know hopping on and hanging out in the World Wide Web let me know and I'll get back to it. And we can talk about dental hygiene and beautiful Dragon Ball cards. We just have a great time. You know, how can how can anybody stop you from having a great time when you're looking at these gorgeous cards? That's what I want to know. That's the question that I want an answer to. Yo, Adam, what's good, dude? I was gonna I was gonna come kick it, but I guess there I didn't communicate enough about my timeline. Sorry about that. But we'll get some hangs in, dude. How do you manage your time for cards? Um, I try to have boundaries with myself around the things that I'm interested in. Quality time with my partner is something that's really important. So I try to clear my mind of the things I'm thinking about in terms of cards and uh, reorient my mind on being present and... Um, it's something that I've practiced and trained and I still have a lot of room to grow and I definitely can get carried away with stuff and excited and just absorbed with this stuff but you know I have other stuff going on in life and gotta gotta give those other things the attention they deserve so they don't fall to the wayside completely I think in life but it's tough it's tough man it's a balance you know it's not all it's not all easy peasy and freezy. It's not all easy peasy Frieza, like Mecha Frieza. Man, what a deck. What a vicious, vicious deck. It's so crazy. Adam, dude, you caught me right at the end of the stream, bro. We'll have to hang out soon. I gotta show you how to sort these cards. Anyway, guys, thank you for coming to hang out. I appreciate you all coming and chilling and making some jokes with me. Um, I will probably be back to do more sorting soon. There's a, another shrimp I'm coming on this Wednesday, so make sure to check that out. This has been a Joku DMD sortum stream, and I'll see you guys next time.